Hey guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read T Chronicles 19 to 24, Proverbs 1, and Psalm 6. Let's get started. Jehoshaphat the king of Judah returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. Then Jehu the son of Hanani the seer went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Because of this wrath that has gone out. Wrath has gone out against you from the Lord. Nevertheless, some of you described me. For you destroyed the Asherah of the Lord, and I have set your heart to seek God. Jehoshaphat lived at Jerusalem. And then he went out again among the people, from Beersheba to the whole country of Ephraim, and brought them back to the Lord, the God of their father. He appointed judges in the land of all their four tribes, cities of Jew. See you, I said, and said to the judges, Consider what you do, and will you judge not for men, not but for the Lord? He is with you in giving judgment. Now then, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Be careful what you do, for there is no injustice with the Lord of God, or partiality, or taking grounds. Moreover, in Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat appointed Zan Levites and priests and heads of families of Israel, and uh, judgment from the Lord had to decide to speed the cases. He had this sea in Jerusalem, and he charged them, He thus he shall do in the field of the Lord, in faithfulness, and with your whole heart. And whenever a case comes to you from any of the brothers who live in their city concerning bloodshed and law or commandment, statutes or law, then you shall walk, and that they may know on and kill guilt, and for the law, and for the law. <clears throat> And wrath, and it may not come upon you and your brother. Thus you shall do, and you will not incur guilt. And behold, I marry the chief priests over you, and all matters of rule. And Zebedee, the son of Ishmael, the governor of the house of Judah, and all the king's matters, and then the Levites will serve his officers. Deal courageously, and may the Lord be with the upright. After this, the mile by seven of the Ammonites, and with them some of the Midianites, came against Jehoshaphat for battle. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A great multitude is coming against you from them, from beyond the sea, and they, and behold, the iron he has his own tamar, and Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah, and Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, and in the house of the Lord, before the new court, <coughs> and said, Hello, oh God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You will over all the kingdoms of the nations, and in your hand are power and might, so that none is able to withstand you. Did you not, uh, uh, God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and give it to forever to the descendants of Abraham your friend? And they have lived in it, and have built for you in it a sanctuary for your name. It's disaster comes upon us, the sword, sword judgment, pestilence, or pestilence, or famine. We will stand before this house and before you. For your name is in this house, and for our tears and our fortune. And you will hear and say, And now behold, the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. He would, he would not listen, let Israel in vain when they came from the land of Egypt. And Egypt, and whom they avoided and did not destroy. They, all, they reward us by coming to drive us down in your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Oh, you will, will you not execute judgment on them? We are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. For we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. You are all Jesus said before the Lord, with their little ones, their wives, and their children. When the Spirit of the Lord came, came upon Jehoshaphat, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benny, the son of Jim, the son of Matani, and the Levi, the son of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. But then he said, Listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, for thus the Lord says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great war, for the battle is not yours but God. Tomorrow go down against them, you know, they'll come up by the ascent as is. You'll find them at the end of the battle, the east, east of the wilderness of Jerusalem. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord in your path for Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, and as the Lord will be with you. Then Jehovah bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshipping you, and the Levites of the Kerasites. And the court high stood to raise them, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. And they rose early in the morning and went out of the, into the wilderness of Tekoa. And they went out to Jehoshaphat and said, Hear me, Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe his prophet, and you will succeed. And when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in the whole way of time. And they went before the army and said, Give thanks to the Lord for his love loving Jehoshaphat. Then they began to sing and praise the Lord and ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. They come against you, so that they were rude. For the men of Ammon and Moab were against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, defending them to destruction. And when they made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they all helped to destroy one another. 
and I left Judah. When Judah came to the watchtower of the wilderness, and he looked toward the hall, and behold, there were dead bodies lying on the ground. None had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take this spot, they found among them in great numbers goods, clothing, and precious things, which they took for themselves until they could carry them all. There were three days in taking the spot. There was so much. On the fourth day, they assembled in the Valley of Baraka. When they were there, they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of that place has been called the Valley of Baraka to this day. Then, and therefore, then they returned. Every man of Judah, Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat, they had returned to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. They came to Jerusalem with harps and lyres and trumpets to the house of the Lord. And the fear of God came on all the kings of the country, and they heard that the Lord had fought against all the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest on as Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah, he was thirty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty-five years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shohi. He walked in the way of Asa, his father, and did not turn aside from there, doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord. In the high places, however, were not taken away. The people did not, had not yet set their hearts upon the God of their father. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat from first to last are written in the Chronicles of Jehu the son of Hanni, which are recorded in the Book of the Kings of Israel. After this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, joined him with the Hazy king of Israel, who acted wickedly. And he joined him in building ships to go to Tarshish. And they built the ships in Ezzi and Geba. And Eliza, the son of Jehoshaphat, who of Meshra, had prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because you have joined him with the Hazy, the Lord will destroy what you have made. And the ships were wrecked and were not able to go to Tarshish. Jehoshaphat slept with his father, and was buried with his fathers in the sea of David. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in his place. Hey, brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azariah, Michael, and Shephatiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Their father gave them great gifts of silver, gold, and valuable possessions, together with fortified cities in Judah. And he gave the kingdom to Jehoram because he was the firstborn. When Jehoram had ascended the throne of his father and was established, he killed all his brothers with the sword. And this is some of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king. And he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the king of Israel. That's the house that Ahab had done. Uh, the daughter of Ahab was his wife. And he did what was evil inside him. Yet the Lord was not willing to destroy the house of David. Because of the covenant that he had made with David. And since he had promised to give the land to him and to his sons forever. In his days, Adam revolted from the world of Judah and served the king of Aaron. Then Jehoram passed over with his commands and all his chariots. And he rose by night and struck the Ammonites who had surrounded him and the chariot commands. Uh, Adam revolted from the world of Judah to this day. At that time, Libna also revolted from his rule because he had forsaken the Lord, the God of his father. Moreover, he made high places in the country of Judah and led the inhabitants of Jerusalem into whoredom and made Judah go astray. And a letter came to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, because you have not walked in the way of Jehoshaphat your father or in the ways of Asa the king of Judah, but have walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and I have enticed a Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem into Hordom, as the house of Ahab led Israel into Hordom, and I say, You have killed your brothers well, of your father's house, who were better than you, and may the Lord will bring a great plague among on your people, your children, your wives, and all your possessions. And you yourself will have a severe sickness with the disease of your bowels, until your bowels come out because of the disease, day by day. And the Lord set up Jehoram, the anger of the Philistines, and of the Arabians who are near the Ethiopians. And they came up against Judah, and invaded it, and carried away all, his, all the possessions they found. That belonged to the king's house, and also his sons and his wives, so that no son was left to him except Jehovah's house, his youngest son. And after all this, the Lord struck him in his bowels with an incurable disease. In the course of time, at the end of two years, his bowels came out because of the disease, and he died in great agony. <clears throat> and his people made no fire in his own honor, like the fires made for his fathers. He was thirty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem, and he departed with no one's regret. They did bury him in the city of David, but not in the tomb of the kings. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made a hazy, his youngest son, king, and his wife. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had killed all the older sons. So Ahaziah's son, the son Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Athaliah, the daughter of, granddaughter of Omri. And also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was counselor. Mother was counsel, his counsel in doing wickedly. He did what was evil and sad, as the house of Ahab had done. After the death of his father, they were as counselors to his under. He followed their counsel, and one was Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to make war against Hazel, king of Syria, at Ramoth Gil. And the Syrians were to join him, and he returned to be healed at Jezreel of the wings, and he received a run when he fought against Hazel, king of Syria. And Hazel, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel. 
Let's see if we can. Hey, also, Dave might go out that the dance floor is easy and she comes about through his going to visit Joe. But when he came there, he went down with Joe, went out with Joe and meet Joe, his son, if you. The Lord had appointed to destroy the house that he had. Then when Jehu was executed in judgment on the house of Ahab, he met the princes of Judah and the sons of Ahaziah's brothers, who attended, who attended Ahaziah, and he killed them. He searched for Ahaziah, and he was cast away while hiding in Samaria, and he was brought to Jehu and put to death. They buried him, for his grandson heard of Jehovah, who he sought the Lord with all his heart. Then the house of Ahaziah had no one able to rule the kingdom. Now when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal family of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons, who was about to be put to death, and she put him in his house in a bedroom. Thus Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, saw her, and the wife of Jehoiada, the priest, because she was a sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah, so that she did not put him to death. Then he remained with them six years, hidden in the house of God, while Athaliah reigned over the land. Uh, in the seventh year, Jehoiada took courage and entered into a covenant with the commanders of the hundreds. Hundreds, Azariah, the son of Jehoiakim, Ishmael, the son of Jehoiakim, Azariah, the son of Obed, Masaiah, the son of Adir, and Elishaphat, uh, the son of Zitri. And they went through Judah and gathered the Levites from all the cities of Judah, and the heads of God's houses of Israel. And they came to Jerusalem, and all the assembly made a covenant with the king and the house of God. Then Jehoiada said to him, Behold, the king's son, let him reign. And as the Lord spoke concerning the son's day, this is the king, this is the thing that you shall do. I will give you priests and Levites to come off Judah on the Sabbath. One third shall be gatekeepers, and one third shall be of the king's house, and one third at the gate of the foundation. And then all the people shall be in the court of the house of the Lord. Then let no one enter the house of the house of the Lord except the priests and the ministry and Levites. They may enter, for they are holy, but all the people shall keep the charge of the Lord. And the Levites shall surround the king, each with his weapons in his hand. And whoever enters the house shall be put to death. They be with the king when he comes in and when he goes out. The Levites and all Judah did according to all Judah that Jehovah had priest command. And they each brought a man who were off to go, who were to go off duty on the Sabbath. For those who were to come on duty on the Sabbath, and Lord Jehovah the priest did not dismiss their division. And Jehovah the priest gave, gave to the captains the spears and the large and small shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of God. And he set all the people as a guard for the king, every man with a weapon in his hand. From the south side of the house to the north side of the house, around the altar and the horns. And they brought out the king's son and put the crown on him and gave him the testimony. And they proclaimed the king, and Jehoiada and his sons anointed him. And they said, Long live the king. When Nathaliah heard the noise of the town, people were running and praising the king. And he went and told the house of the noise of the people. And as she looked, there was the king standing by a pillar at the entrance, and the captain from the trumpeters beside the king. And all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets. And the singers with their musical instruments leaning in the celebration. And Nathaliah tore her clothes and cried, Treason, treason. Then Jehoiada and the priest brought out the captains who were set over the army, saying to them, We are out between the ranks, and anyone who follows her is to be put to death with sword. Well, the priest said, Do not put her to death in the house of the Lord. But they laid their hands on, hands on her, and she went into the entrance of the hotel, or scared the king's house. And they put her to death here, there. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between himself and all the people in the king that they should be, they should be the Lord's people. And all the people went to the house of battle and tore it down. His altars and his images they broke in pieces, and they killed Matt and the priest of Baal before the altars. And Jehoiada posed a watchman for the house of the Lord, the house of the Lord, under the direction of the Levitical priest and the Levite and David had organized to be in charge of the house of the Lord. To offer burnt offerings to the Lord, as it is written in the Lord Moses, with rejoicing and with singing, according to the order of David. He stationed the gatekeepers at the gates of the house of the Lord. To of the Lord, so that no one should enter in who was in any way unclean. Then he took the captains, the nobles, the governors of the people, and all the people of the, of the land, all the people of the other land, <clears throat> and he stationed the gatekeepers in the gates of the house of the Lord, so that no one should enter. In any way unclean. And he took the captains, the nobles, the governors, the people, and all the people of the land. And they brought the king down from the house of the Lord, marching through the upper gate of, to the king's house. And they set the king on the royal throne. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet after Thalia had been put to death with the sword. Josh was seven years old when he began to pray, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibia of Bishma. And Josh did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada got, got for him two wives, and he had sons and daughters. 
Of this, Josh decided to restore the house of the world. When he got into prison and Levi and said to him, Go out to the cities of Judah and gather all his money to repair the house of the world from year to year and see that you act with him. But Levi did not act with him. So the king summoned Jehoiada and the chief and said to him, Might be not required the Levi to bring in from Judah and Jerusalem the tax levied by Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the congregation of Israel, for the ten of testament. For the sons of the third, that wicked woman, had broken into the house of God. And it actually used all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord from Baal. So the king commanded, and they made a chest and set outside the gate of the house of the Lord. And proclamation was made throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring in for the Lord the tax that made the seven of God laid on Israel in the wilderness. And all the priests and the princes and all the people rejoiced and brought their tax and dropped it into the chest until they had finished. And whenever the chest was brought to the king's offices by the Levi, they saw that there was much money in it. The king's secretary and the officer of the chief priest would come and empty the chest and take it and return it to his place. Thus they did day after day and collected money in abundance. And the king and Jehoiada gave it to those who had charged the work of the house of the law. And they hired masons and carpenters to restore the house of the law. The initial work is in iron and bronze to repair the house of the law. And there, so those who were engaged in the work labor, and they were carrying one forward in the hand, and they restored the house of God to its proper condition and strengthened it. And when they finished, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehovah, and with it were made utensils for the house of the Lord, made for the Sabbath and for the burnt offering, and for the dishes for incense and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord regularly all the days of Jehovah. But Jehovah grew old and full of days and died. He was 130 years old at his death. And they buried him in the sea of David among the king, because he had done good in Israel and all God in his house. Now after the death of Jehoiada, the princes of Judah came and paid homage to the king. And then the king listened to them. And they abandoned the house of Lord, the God of their father, and served the Asherim and the Idols, and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for the guilt of death. And he sent prophets among them to bring them back to the Lord. They used to testify against them, but they would not pay attention. And the spirit of God closed Zechariah, the son of Jehovah, the priest. And he stood above the people and said to them, Thus says God, why do you break the commandments of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he has forsaken you, that they conspired against him. And by command of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. As Josh the king did not remember the kindness with that Jehovah, Zechariah, father, Eshim, but killed his son. And when he was dying, he said, May the Lord see an avenge. At the end of the year, the army of the Syrians came up against Josh. They came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed the princes of the people from among the people of and sent all the spoil to the king of Damascus. Through the, though the armies of the Syrians had come with Fema, the Lord delivered them into the hand of a very great army, because Judah had forsaken the Lord, their God of their father. Thus they executed judgment on Josh, and they departed from him, leaving him severely wounded. His hands stood in spite against him. It is the blood of the son of the Jehovah of Christ, and he killed him on the so he died. And they buried him in the sea of but they did not bury him in the tombs of the king. Those who conspired against him were Zaba, the son of Shemeth, the Amnah, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Shemeth, the Moabite. He counseled his sons and of the many oracles against him, and of the rebuilding of the house of God, written in the story of the book of the king. And they made his son reign in his place. Proverbs 1. The prophets of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction and wise dealing in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple knowledge and discretion to the youth, that the wise can increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance, to understand a prophet and say the words of the wise and their wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, for despite wisdom and instruction. Hear my son, your father's instruction, forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are grateful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. My son, as soon as entice you, do not consent. If they say, Come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without reason. Like shall let us clothe them in life and hold like those who go down to the pit. We shall find our precious goods, we shall fill our house with plunder. There are no little among us, we are all of one purse. My son, do not walk in the way of them, hold that. Hold back your foot from their past, hold for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. For in vain is in that spirit in the sight of any breath. Uh, these are lion men and lion wait for their own blood. They, they send ambush for their own lives. Such are the ways of everyone who is greedy for unjust gain, and takes away the life of his possessed. Wisdom cries aloud in the street, and the mother she raises her voice at the head of the noise tree, she cries out. At at the entrance of the sea gate, she speaks. How long are simple ones who will you love being simple? How uh, long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and full take knowledge? If you turn on my reproof, behold, I'll pour out my spirit to you. I'll make my words known to you. And do that is called, and you refuse to listen. I have stretched on my hand. And no one has heeded, because you have ignored all my counsel. And would have none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I'll mock when terror strikes you. And when terror strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind. 
and stress and anguish are come upon you, then they'll call upon me, and I will not answer. They'll seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hate and knowledge. And hate and knowledge, and did not choose to fear the Lord. Would have none of my counsel and disgraced all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way, and have their fill of their own device. For the simple are killed by the telling way, and the complacency are forced to dread. But whoever listens to me will die secure, and will be at ease, without dread or disaster. Psalm 100. Psalm six and lord rebuke me not in your anger nor discipline me in your wrath be gracious to me i love i am languishing heal me O lord for my bones are troubled my soul is so greatly oh, so is greatly troubled but you are the how long turn out lord deliver my life save me for the sake of your step of love for in death there is no remembrance of you in show who will give you praise i am weary with my money every night i flood my bed with tears i drench my couch with my weeping my eye wastes away because of grief. It grows weakly to the whole of my flesh. So far from me, all your work is evil. For the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. And the Lord has my hurt. All my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall turn back and be put to shame in a moment. And now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's prayer. Please bow your heads. Father in heaven, how they be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be drawn on earth as it is in heaven. You rest today our daily breath. The girls are deaf, as you are so beyond our doubters. We is not this temptation, but deliver from the evil one. So this is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.